Well, I've said I don't want to dwell on terminological issues. I can't resist making a point about capitalism and socialism. Rand used to identify certain terms and ideas as anti-concepts. That is, terms that actually function to obscure our understanding rather than facilitating it, making it harder for us to grasp other legitimate concepts. One important category of anti-concepts is what Rand called the package deal referring to any term whose meaning conceals an implicit presupposition that certain things go together but in actuality do not. Although Rand would not agree with the following examples, I've become convinced that the terms capitalism and socialism are really anti-concepts of the package deal variety. Libertarians sometimes debate whether the real or authentic meaning of a term like capitalism is A, the free market, or B, government favoritism toward business, or C, the separation between labor and ownership, an arrangement neutral between the other two. Austrians tend to use the term in the first sense. Individualist anarchists in the Tuckerite tradition tend to use it in the second and third. But in ordinary usage, I fear, it actually stands for an amalgamation of incompatible meanings. Suppose I were to invent a new word, zaxelbacks, and define it as a metallic sphere like the Washington Monument. That's the definition, a metallic sphere like the Washington Monument. <laughs> In short, I build my ill-chosen example into the definition. Now, some linguistic subgroup might start using the term Zaxelbacks as though it just meant metallic sphere, or as though it just meant something of the same kind as the Washington Monument, and that's fine. But my definition incorporates both, and this conceals the false assumption that the Washington Monument is a metallic sphere. Any attempt to use the term Zaxelbacks, meaning what I mean by it, involves the user in this false assumption. That's what Rand means by a package deal term. Now, I think the word capitalism, if used with the meaning most people give it, is a package deal term. By capitalism, most people mean neither the free market, simpliciter, nor the prevailing neo-mercantilist system, simpliciter. Rather, what most people mean by capitalism is this free market system that currently prevails in the Western world. <laughs> in short, the term capitalism, as generally used, conceals an assumption that the prevailing system is a free market. And since the prevailing system is, in fact, largely one of government favoritism toward business, the ordinary use of the term carries with it the assumption that the free market is government favoritism toward business. And similar <coughs> considerations apply to the term socialism. Most people don't mean by socialism anything so precise as state ownership of the means of production. Instead, they really mean something like the opposite of capitalism. <laughs> then if capitalism is a package deal term, so is socialism. It conveys opposition to the free market and opposition to neo-mercantilism as though these were one and the same. And that, I suggest, is the function of these terms, to blur the distinction between the free market and neo-mercantilism. Such confusion prevails because it works to the advantage of the statist establishment. Those who want to defend the free market can more easily be seduced into defending neo-mercantilism. And those who want to combat neo-mercantilism can more easily be seduced into combating the free market. Either way, the state remains secure.